Hi, Robin. How are you going? Hi, Laura. I'm good, thanks. Good. How are you? Yeah, really awesome. I'm um, I'm having the best time just meeting all these lovely new people like yourself, and um, and thank you so much for for getting hold of me. Um, you know that that took a that took a lot of courage, and um, I would love you to share part of your story at some point if you feel comfortable to do that, and um, you know see what pearls of wisdom that you might have to offer the people who are watching um, and who may need the support and the encouragement and um, any little you know, offers of, of advice that you may have. So just before we get into that, how about you just let us know um, maybe a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Well, that's I just want to say a huge thank you to you for doing exactly what it is that you're doing, making a big change and what is quite a scary situation for a lot of people. Um, and especially using an online platform is going to be really advantageous for a lot of people right now. So big, huge kudos to you for actually taking the initiative and doing it um, and for absolutely no gain other than to help people. So yeah, really wanted to just recognise that. Um, so my name is Robin Walker. I live in New Zealand. I'm in Kapi Coast. Um, I'm in New Zealand. Um, I, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a solo mum. I have three children. I have one granddaughter. I um, I have been widowed by suicide. I have raised a child with severe um, health issues. I have been through two different marriages. I have been, um, I was a high flyer in the corporate world when I was in the corporate world. Um, and then, although this isn't actually about me, it just gives you a little bit of background about where I sort of come from. Mm. Um, in 2011, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, but fortunately, something happened in my life and um, something I would have never, ever foreseen happening. Um, and I was actually the victim of a road rage incident, which um, nearly took my life away from me and it nearly took a, the living parent away from two of my children. Um, and my journey since then has been um, one of recovery, one of healing, one of learning to live um, with the, the things are the way they are and learning to have to make adjustments with that sort of thing. So that's really where I come from, a place of wanting to share and a place of wanting to just um, um, give people some help and some wisdom and some guidance around those sorts of things. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I don't look at the negative side of what happened. I always believe that there's a silver lining in every cloud. Um, and when I was originally told that, I struggled because all I wanted to do was go back to what my norm was. And then I went, actually, no. Once I got that in my head, that I can't go back. This is what I've got to work mm -hmm. with. I now need to concentrate on moving forward. That is when things settled down a lot for me. So, and then I've always said, there's not a silver lining in every cloud. A lot of clouds have gold linings. And I believe that this is here for a reason. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a little bit. A little bit, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, so. yeah. I love that, you know, and, and thank you so much for sharing because I think at, at times like this, a lot of people are not sharing and they're not talking about themselves. You know, they're, they're keeping quiet and that's what finding your voice is about. It's about, you know, people like yourself, Robin, who just go, oh, I just, I'm feeling drawn to sharing my story. Now is the right time for me to do this. And when you give a background like what you just have, it allows a lot of people to connect with who you are. And perhaps there's a part of them that they identify with through you saying everything that you're saying. And so I just want to say thank you. I mean, it's a very courageous step to step into a vulnerable space and to put yourself out there. Um, I think that it's, it's very brave. And I'm so excited to have a chat with you today around what it is that um, you've been going through, I guess, with, with the whole coronavirus thing and, and what that might mean for any change you've been feeling. Because obviously you spoke, I wrote it down here, you know, learning to adjust to change. Change is inevitable. We don't always know in what form change is going to take place. It just so happens mm. that it's taken place uh, on a global scale, everybody being affected in one way or another. There is not one person who is unaffected unless you're living in the deepest parts of the jungle somewhere you know there 
everybody is touched by this. And so I wondered if, if there was anything that you wanted to just talk to, you know, did you, did you want to, how did you want to get started? Um, I think the thing for me was it took me a few days to, um, I'm one of these people that don't, because of where I've been from, I don't actually look, I'm not, like I'm concentrating more on positives in every day. So I, I make a conscious effort to look at positives and I wake up going to, knowing that I went to sleep the night before with the affirmation of gratitude in my head. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wake up with. Um, and I'm not the first, I'm not the person who would go and buy a newspaper and would sit and read a newspaper from back to front. I'm not the person that would look on stuff and read every single article. I'm not the person that would have a radio going in the background. So, but I am the person that does watch the news at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I make a conscious choice to, even though with the changes um, globally, um, and there is a lot more, a lot more hype, a lot more talk, a lot more, I call it scaremongering as well around and people have their own opinions and then they start talking and then it's like a Chinese whispers sorts of thing and I have for the last nine years since the assault um, I've stepped right back from doing that so I've got a little bit of coping strategies around how to keep out those things from my inner circle mm -hmm. so those things that could influence us um, like for instance having the news on and listening to the news every hour mm -hmm. um, I don't need to know that. I need to know like once a day or twice a day, for instance, at the moment I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to do twice a day. Mm. Um, but in, in the crux of things, I look for the positives and I'm, I'm looking at, it did take me a long, long, long time to do this. And I think this is where I've probably got a little bit of a slight forward motion than what a lot of people would have who have, haven't been through something like this mm -hmm. but I've lived with agoraphobia and I've lived with anxiety for since 2011 and so for me it's having a lot less impact because it's easy for me to go back to isolation because I've got comfortable with isolation but I know that that's not where a lot of people are majority of people aren't mm -hmm. used to living in isolation so I'm trying to put my thinking cap back onto how I got through that process in the first place. Now, um, what I do do is I make an effort to look at things. I do still suffer from anxiety and I still do get overwhelmed and I still do to do the ruminating, but I know that I also have techniques and I have things like that that can actually help me limit how much impact that has on me mm -hmm. and one of those things like for instance I just mentioned about cutting down how much influence I let the media have on me mm -hmm. um for me personally I think the biggest thing is that my children I've got one child that lives with me full-time she's a teenager um and I have um, two adult children that live both an hour and a half sort of drive away from me and my granddaughter's an hour and a half so I can't, we all can't be together um, and they still have their lives and their things that have to keep on going. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm so grateful that we have things like um, Snapchat and we have Facebook and those sorts of things because I'm looking at those little things and I can see the things that I'm not there experiencing, but I'm still experiencing them, but mm -hmm. from, a, from a distance. And so I look at that and I think that's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me personally, um, I, I also had a car accident last year, which took away a lot of my independence, and that was very, very difficult, and I probably relate that to how some people are feeling right now, um, and I was found, I had a head injury, my second head injury, third head injury, I had no vehicle, so I was reliant on a lot of resources, um, and I had to learn one thing, and one thing was that I get really big satisfaction out of helping other people. Mm. I don't know many people that wouldn't have that feeling of satisfaction from being able to help somebody. And I used to think that I was being an inconvenience by asking someone to do something for me. Mm. And when I had no choice, I realized that I could either, but I realized that by me suffering 
and me being stubborn and not asking someone to help me or to pick up my groceries or to take the dog for a walk or if they could pick me up and take me for a drive to go and get something was actually preventing that somebody else from having that same feeling that I get when I like to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, and today I've actually had someone who runs a business down the road um, who said to me, is there anything at all? And I said, there's only one thing I'm, I didn't get was that shea coffee. <laughs> and she said, I'll go after work and if I can get some. Um, and it's just, my, it's just my thing. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I have one um, latte coffee a day. Yeah. And that's my thing. I could live without it. Yeah. But the thing is, it gives her such huge satisfaction of being able to help me. Yeah. So by me asking, give someone else, it's a gift that you're giving to somebody yeah. else to make them feel that they're actually also equally valued in a time like this. And it, it prevents us from being totally isolated. And she turned up and she had her plastic, you know, her gloves on and she just says, I'll leave it here on the doorstep for you. And, you know, but, and, and we're just taking good, good hygiene practices and clarity. Um, yeah. But it's a case of realising that we do have an ability to help other people, like I said, for your stuff. Mm. You're helping other people by reaching out and asking people to help you. That is a gift. It's actually not what are we gaining. It's actually what are we giving. Um, um, and to be in that place of receiving, being able to receive, because there's a lot of us that are like, oh, no, I don't need anything, but how can I help you? And, and then what, what's happening is we're not putting on our own oxygen mask first to then be able to help other people. We're, we're putting on everyone else's oxygen mask. And so when we can get into the point of, I'm not able to put on my mask first, and can you please help me to do that so that I can then help other people? That's actually quite a large mind shift, isn't it? It's, it's getting yourself into that, that place of, I'm, I'm not okay, I do need help, can you help me? And someone going, I would love to. Thank you. This is amazing. You've just made my day. You know, and, and being okay to give people that opportunity. You're totally right. You are very, very, very right. And I think we all need to realize what are the things that make us as a person feel good? Mm. What, what is it about us as individuals when we connect with someone else? What, what is it that we're looking for? Human beings, we are designed to interact with people. Even introverts are designed to interact with people, but not necessarily on a face-to-face -face basis. But yeah. we just have to ask, what is it that we enjoy about interaction? What is it that we enjoy about isolation? And if we start looking at our own behaviours, we can then apply that more to um, strategies that we've all got the ability to use. Um, I think we've what I learned was that I'd become so rigid with running around, keeping up with society, keeping up with the workforce, keeping up with the Joneses, doing what you had to get done, that we actually have all, and I'm saying generically, that we all lose ourselves. Absolutely. And we don't realise what our own values are as individuals. And for me... I'll tell, I'll tell you this, it's actually quite, a, it's quite embarrassing, but um, I'm just being really realistic. My psychologist said to me many years ago, she said, in order to find out how we're going to get you to a place of feeling that you have got value and purpose, and that's what, as individuals, that's what we need, right? If you go through a whole day and you've got no value, no purpose, you're going to be real Debbie Downer. Seriously, I've been there, I've lived it, I know what it's like. Mm. And she says to me, what are your core values? And I said, well, I've got $3 in this bank account and my mortgage is X, Y, Z. And she said, no, <laughs> that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. And I went, what do you mean? And she said, what, do you, what are your core values? What makes you as a person tick? And I went, I have got no idea. Doing yeah. what someone else is going to do. And then when, uh, for me, it was really hard because I never looked at myself. I was always looking about how I can help yeah. other people. How yeah. I can do this, how I can do this. What do I have to do? And I have to keep on with that race. We're on that, you know, that rat wheel. You know, mm -hmm. you just got to keep on going. And, and this is actually, I think, going to help so many people mm -hmm. stop and take a deep breath and actually realise we can still achieve that 
feeling of fulfillment we can still achieve life satisfaction we can still achieve togetherness we can still achieve community um that feeling of belonging without needing to run around like demented people mm. that i i felt like that myself um mm. it's, it's a very very it's a very uneasy thing and i'm not going to underestimate that it's a really really uneasy thing when change happens but there's also a saying that you know you need to put your own health you know what is it um Make sure you're taking good care of your health before your health, or put your health as a priority before your health, you're forced to actually prioritise your health. Um, and I think that's both a physical and a mental thing as well. Um, so. I think, yeah, it's not only physical and mental, it's um, emotional and it's spiritual, you know. Right now we have, um, I was talking to a father today of a uh, Catholic church who said that his entire congregation has stop coming and he doesn't mm -hmm. do about it so i suggested uh that he comes on my page and and does a video because health is holistic it's not just you know what you're eating for it's not how busy you are it's not physically your health if you you can be eating and exercising but if your emotional state is not a healthy state you're not healthy if your mental state is not healthy but everything else is if you are con not connected to something that is greater than yourself whatever that may be whether it's God or whether it's Buddha, whether it's source, energy, universe, angels, fairies, you know, whatever it is, if you are not connected to something that is bigger than you, you can so easily right now become so overwhelmed because you feel um, mortal. You don't feel yeah. like you're being supported, you know, whereas there's a lot of us who, um, if we are connected, have a sense of there is a divine order in this. Every, this has happened for a reason we are all going to be okay we are all going to learn from this we're going to emerge out the other side even better than what we've gone in because we're going to learn resilience we're going to learn to find comfort in the discomfort of working out who each of us are because we're going to have time to think about it now you know i had i had lived um it turned out that i had without me knowing i'd lived in an extremely over anxious state and um i think there's a term that calls us um i can't remember what it is i have ptsd so sometimes the words just disappear mm. um but it's something like high functioning anxiety yeah and so you're really it's another word that people use for goal driven people but you're goal driven because you want to get there rather than be here mm. and i've had to learn a lot of techniques about how to stop that and it's been a really hard thing and and if i can i just want to share a couple of those little things which yeah, I've, go I've been really really beneficial um and the main thing i would talk about and i want everyone to realize that i'm not a therapist I'm only sharing things that I have been taught and things that I've learned, things that I've tried, I mm. fought with, people don't want to try them because they feel new to me, but they've actually been my saving grace. And even though now I still have anxiety attacks and severe panic attacks, I had an ambulance here last weekend. Um, but um, there's a thing that we all have that no one can take away from us, and it's our senses. Yeah. Now, uh, our, se our senses are so strongly connected to our brain waves and if we were to think about our brain running around like on that rat wheel like an anxiety and just picking up that momentum and overthinking and we need something to break that momentum and the little breaks to actually it's like if you're a swimmer those times that you pause and you come up and you take a breath mm. those are actually really really vital things i have got many different things that i use for that but when we're talking senses like i'm sitting here now and um i've got a soft smooth heart-shaped crystal right in my hand um and it's because i just want to think i'm sitting here and i've been rubbing it while i'm talking to you because it's soothing it's smoothing for me it's showing me that it's calm there's no rough in it um but then i also have and i'm not here to talk crystals because i've got 101 different items um i've got an amethyst here mm. because it's the color purple and i love the color purple and i also have a drink bottle which is cold it's ice it's cold mm. um 
I have things like, for instance, my mop top. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. I'm that person who has little <laughs> funny gadgets, right? It's a mop top. And even my granddaughter loves it. My kids will look at me and go, Mum, seriously. Yeah. But um, I have a mirror, and it's got a rose on it. Again, mm -hmm. it's purple. But it's got a rose on it because roses mean so much to me. Mm. I've got cloves oil here because it can break the scent. Um, these things are all things that can actually stop your mind from over, mm. um, from overrunning into those um, heightened anxiety states. So, for instance, if you find um, this is one thing that I got taught um, is that if you find that you're starting to get your anxiety starting to build, you have got a multitude of ways to be able to actually slow it down or just mm. give yourself a break. And that could be something as simple as getting up and walking to the kitchen and running your hand under cold running water. Mm. And that will stop the blood flow from being so quick. That, and it will just give you a chance to just breathe. Yeah. Also learning to breathe. You notice that I don't breathe? You notice that I don't breathe? <laughs> I, I'm not a breather. I'm a. I'm more. I get more passionate and more excited about showing and sharing so much that I actually stop and forget to breathe. And yesterday, I, I actually do some of these on my own page. But yesterday, I actually sat there and I did this and I actually showed people how to actually breathe. And mm. right now, a lot of people are also missing that touch and that comfort of being able to have somebody with them. Um, and if we were to stop and breathe, put your hand on your stomach and your hand across your chest, close your eyes, imagine whatever, and breathe into the count of four, hold it for the count of four and breathe out to the count of four, or counts of whatever it is that you work with, you're actually feeling that sense of yourself holding onto your chest and your tummy. Now, as women, as women especially, we're really, really vulnerable, especially mm. around our tummy areas. Um, and that there is actually a really kind, caring, self-soothing way of actually preventing that anxiety from just continuing to take further momentum. Um, that's another idea. Something like, for instance, um, a room spray or a hand cream. Um, taking time to actually realise how soft that is on your hands. Taking time to actually smell it. Um, going outside, putting your feet on the grass. Mm -hmm. realizing that oh it must have rained last night it's still quite damp under there clenching your toes up on the grass and realizing that you can actually feel those bl blades of grass underneath your toes just sitting on the chair looking outside at the window and actually seeing the the clouds moving around in the sky or the birds mm. and just imagine what those birds might be thinking these are all little little things they're tiny and everyone's going yeah 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 I can hear you saying, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I was that person. Mm. And you know what? What I was doing wasn't working. Thinking it would all stop and it would all go away wasn't working. I had to find a way to do tiny little things that weren't going to be big, they weren't going to be expensive, they were things that I could do with whatever I've got around me, and they work. Mm. We all have in our house something like, for instance, you've got coffee or you've got running water. Smelling coffee will, ch will change the way your brain's reacting. Um, even if it's only for those two seconds that you're sitting there smelling that, you know, a dry mm -hmm. cup of coffee or dry coffee from a canister. Um, yeah. All of these little things are so, they're little. They are little, but together, lots of little things become something really, really big. And, and I they think are just... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to say, um, just because I'm aware of our time as well, um, and I'd, I'd love to to maybe get you on again and hear some other tips that you may have. Um, that would be really awesome. So I don't mean to diminish what you're saying at all by needing to um, kind of hear. Um, but what I'm really um, picking up from what it is that you're saying is that the it, it is the little things that count. You know, we've been given the opportunity to just reset and to take a look and look at what's around us and look at ourselves and look at how magnificent our body is that it's able to do everything that it does and you know stopping and taking a look out staring out the window and just watching the clouds go by can actually have a really calming meditative effect on us which helps to then you know calm down our um sympathetic nervous system that is just kicking in going okay what are we doing are we fighting this are we flying you know panic 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 
But if you just stop and do any of those techniques, any combination of the techniques or every single one of those techniques, you're doing something to get yourself into that space where you're able to just slow down. You know, we've yeah. been, like you said, we've been on that treadmill, that hamster wheel. We've been going, 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 going. We've fallen off the hamster wheel, you know, because it suddenly stopped and we're, we're giddy. You know, we're going, wait a minute, we don't even know, where are we now? You know, what, we are not in the wheel anymore. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? Mm -hmm. And that can actually create a lot of panic and a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear of the unknown. And this is not our comfort zone. And so I really want to say thank you because there may well be a lot of people who've gone, oh, I didn't realize that actually playing with something in my hand could be calming, you know, um, just little, little pills like that. So thank you so much. And I'm sure I can thank you on behalf of the audience that watches our videos as well. Um, I just wondered in a sentence, have you got anything that you would like to be your takeaway message for everybody? Ooh. Um, my takeaway message would be that we can't change what's going on around uh, on the outside, but we can change what's going on on the inside. We can't have influence on what's going on out there but we can influence how we're reacting to it. And that there is, um, that there's probably a kindness and compassion for yourself is a big, big, big thing. Um, and right now, um, probably one of the biggest things I've, I've just, it's just come to me now, treat yourself like you would your best friend. Mm. If you had to give advice to your best friend, what would that be? And that there is what I would implore every single one of you to take on board for yourself. Mm. What ideas can I give to my best friend? What is something that I would say to my best friend if she was um, extremely panicked about this? What would I say to her? And think about that yourself. Because removing yourself from that situation emotionally can actually give you the ability to think a different way. So... Mm. But you have to be your best friend. You have to be your own best friend. So that's, that. that's really good. Yeah. That, is, that is so amazing. Uh, you know, and thank you. Thank you so much for finding, for finding this and for contributing, you know. I'd love for you to be able to share it on the group maybe that you um, found it on because I think that there would be quite a few people who who could really gain benefit from it. So you'd have the option to share the video once I've been able to upload it tonight. Um, and sure. you know, and, and put put your two cents in there. It's it's really good. You know, you when you've gone through something, you come from a place of credibility. You're not reading out of a book. You know, you yeah. are you are saying this is what I found. This is what has worked for me. Perhaps, maybe, if you try something, it may or may not work for you. But give it a go. So we're going to need to finish it here, unfortunately. But we'll stay connected. <laughs> um, and I'm going to wish you very well until next time we speak. And, um, you know, if there's anything else that you just want to add later, you just pop it into the comments underneath the video. Thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, look, it's... Take it's been, yeah, absolutely, you know, and thank you so much.